Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, we are officially here and we've got our first episode of 2022 with uh, Let's Develop. So I'm so excited that everybody's here. Uh, please put in chat where you're from and how cold it is because it is freezing going on right now. We've got a snowstorm that's coming into uh, uh, Washington State where I'm at right now. So we're expecting several inches uh, tonight. So that's going to be kind of fun. But let's kind of dive into what we're looking at. So uh, today we've got special guest Mike Busby going to be looking at the magic in composition. Um, so that should be a really, really cool program. Um, if you're brand new to Let's Develop, we've got a new episode every two weeks that's coming out. We bring in the top photographers from all over, and we just kind of hang out and learn some stuff from them. So it's a free webinar series brought to you by American Color Imaging. You can register at acilab.com slash let's dash develop um, for this webinar and future ones. So uh, uh, a big shout out and thank you to ACI for uh, making this happen. So if you missed the last episode that we had, uh, Lisa Kuchara had Wabi Sabi photographing the old, the everyday, and the imperfect. Um, if you're like me and getting into image competition and you're like, I need to come up with some new ideas of things to do, uh, go back and watch this replay. It's live right now on the website. Uh, holy cow, she's going to blow your mind with ideas, uh, just new ways of looking at stuff. Uh, I highly, highly recommend that you go check that out out. Okay, so now let's actually uh, uh, dive into what we're going to be looking at today. I've got Mike Busby uh, that's here, and uh, Mike is absolutely fantastic educator, and uh, he's going to be sharing with us about the uh, uh, creativity and looking at composition and how we all kind of bring all that in there, because uh, he's got some magic stuff that goes through um, with it. Uh, if you do have questions for Mike, please put them into the chat. I'll be moderating that, so we'll be able to uh, go back and forth and actually have uh, Mike answer these questions live. Um, so that should be really, really cool that's on there. So uh, uh, as we get in here, so uh, Mike Busby, he's a master photographer and a certified professional photographer. He's the owner and coach at Mike Busby School of Photography. He helps people develop and gain confidence in their photography. He instructs all phases of it from learning the fundamentals to advanced lighting uh, to creative techniques and helps kind of bring out your inner voice. Shoots professional landscapes, lifestyle, architecture, macro, and infrared photography. I love his infrared photography, by the way. Uh, he holds a master's degree in art with the emphasis in composition, beauty, and the judgment of taste. Uh, he's also the president of the Professional Photographers of Washington, too, and he's become a very good friend through that. So, uh, uh, Mike Busby, it's officially time. So, uh, you want to take it away Here for us? Go. Here we go. Um, Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mike, and tonight we're going to talk composition. Uh, what I'm hoping for tonight is, in in these meetings, there are people with with all different kinds of skill levels. Uh, some of you guys know more than me, some of you know less than me. But what I'm hoping for tonight is to give you guys some insights for the working pros, just some insights, maybe some new approaches to composition. And if you're fairly new to photography or to composition, uh, I'd like to get just give you some direction. Here's some way to ways to look at images and make decisions to get really strong images. Everything I'm going to show you tonight, all the uh, techniques and decisions I make, are what I use in my own photography. And uh, something that's really important is is when I speak. Um, I consider these guidelines, not rules, and there are no absolutes. So what I'm talking about is. Here's what I use generally, but there's always exceptions. It just it just depends what the the image needs. Uh, Chris, thanks for the the, the introduction. Um, I do hold a master's in the humanities. It's it's specific to the philosophy of art, and I spent just a ton of time on the nature of art, beauty, creativity, and the judgment of taste. I spend a lot of time on composition, how we experience the world, and since I do a lot of competition, how judges review work. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about images and, and, and composing to what I want. But if any of you are competitors out there, let me know. Just type it in, talk it to Chris, uh, send it to Chris, and just what kind of competitions you enter. 
Um, yeah, and so put it in chat right now. What what competitions are you doing? PPA? Are you doing WPPI? Local stuff? Like uh, what competitions are you entering right now? Put it in exactly. the chat. <laughs> exactly. Got Karen, um, as PPA, you Becky, PPI, and PPA State and IPC. Yeah, all of them. Dennis is like, yep, I got everything. <laughs> okay, because we're going to talk. We will have a. There's a section where I talk about the nature of judging, and and I hope you guys can benefit from that. Uh, when I talk about the philosophy of art, an example of it last year is I read close to 35 artists, writers, and painters uh, from the Romantic period. Uh, that's the early 1800s, because that era really resembles kind of the intent of what I'm trying to do. And also during that time, I, I viewed and wrote out critiques for nearly 160 paintings. Um, this is just my way to look at images and learn about composition. So composition itself and kind of why I'm doing that is... We taught composition all the time. You hear composition all the time, but I've never really taken a class on composition. When I ask people about composition and what it is, uh, it's subject placement, it's the rule of thirds. Uh, it might be design elements. So it's all these kind of material physical things that people talk about, but they're really not talking about the dynamics of composing to experience, how to enhance that experience for the viewer, because that's where the, the strength of the images come. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about that. And again, I'm just hoping to, to provide you some uh, guidelines so you can make better decisions. So let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the screen share, Chris. Hey, it's a sharing right now. So it's a share. So, okay. Um, just real quick, I'm going to go through these pretty quick. This is just some of my work. So you can have an idea of this is what I do. Um, most of this is, is night photography. And almost all of it is from just the area that I live. Uh, that's down in Pasco. That's at Handler Bridge. This is why everybody's got to come to Washington and visit. Spend some time with Mike. He'll show you the good spots. Yeah, th this is 20 minutes. This is 20 minutes from my home, and this is all almost all in Spokane. Uh, a lot of these images, since we got a lot of PPA people, a lot of these images, most of these images have merited, and quite a few of them have won awards at the affiliate level. So that's an example of my work. Okay, let's talk composition. So we've got 40 minutes and I want to get this out to you as, as kind of quick as I can with the quality so you guys are, are understanding it. We're going to talk about these three key aspects. Then I'm going to walk you through some images and I'll show you this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. Um, and then I've got a few images for you that are just Let's talk about them a little bit, and then we'll open it up for questions. I will, at each of the sections, ask people for questions, and we'll kind of chunk those questions up. So I've been taking a, a three-step approach to composition, and that is what catches the eye, what captures the mind, and then how do I maintain the viewer in the image, right? So, you know, um, those are the three things that, that I'm looking at, and there are different compositional techniques we can use for each specific area. Our first image we're going to look at, this is what we're going to learn off. Uh, so there's this guy, his name is Ansel Adams, and he was hired out by the National uh, Geological Survey. So a lot of his images are in the public domain and we get to look at them and talk about them so we can learn a little bit. So this is uh, Grand Tetons and the Snake River. And when I'm talking about catching the eye, whoops, hang on just a second. Oh, spoilers. No. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so when I'm talking about composing to catch the eye, I'm talking about the center of interest 
the main subject, where is that eye going first? Uh, that's critical because that's where the eye is landing and then people move from there. So the things that catch the eye, large shapes, areas of high contrast, big areas of brightness or darkness, strong lines, uh, and then the most prominent are faces and eyes. And it doesn't matter if it's people or if it's animals. If you've got a face in your image, people are going to be going to that first thing. It is our nature inherently that whenever we see a face, we need to read that to kind of see how we're going to be interacting with whatever the person or, or the creature is. Uh, again, when I'm talking of, about, uh, you know, catching the eye, we're also about talking composing to the eye. So it's not only our, our subject, but then the question becomes, how can we emphasize that? Or if our main subject is different from where the eye is landing, how can we make some processing changes to get the eye to land where we want it to land? The second section... On. So the next area I want to talk about is the area of interest. And this is something we don't really talk about, but this is the area that captures the mind. And what we're talking about is a well-defined area within that image that the eyeballs are going to be going all over. They're going to be exploring. And that's where they get context for the main subject. Uh, in this particular image, there's, you can see the circle here. Can you see my mouse, Chris? We can, yes. Okay, very good. So it turns out the mind loves details. Uh, it lo loves variety in details, the tones, the textures. Uh, in this particular image, we've also got some real good visual weight that, that's going on. But we've just got a whole lot of things if we look at the circle, here's where the eye falls. And then the eyeballs want to go all through here, building the context. And they're looking at all that detail and they're making meaning from it. The third section, and if, if uh, this is sounding just a little bit chunked up, it'll start making sense as, as we move through it. And we're going to go through this process two or three times. The final, uh, the third part of, of the composition is how do we keep the viewer in the mind or in the mind? How do we keep the viewer in the image? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so if we look at this image, uh, we see the edges have all been toned down, right? Because as these edges are toned down, that makes them less interesting. The eyeballs go back to the center. We can see strong lines here, but we can see where Ansel has toned them down and muted them on the edge. If there were any major distractions along the edges of the frame, they've all been gone. And we can also kind of see that he's got a vignette and he's used that vignette. One, it, it defines and supports the area of interest. And two, it darkens down the edges, which in effect, and by extension, makes the area of interest really, really pop. Uh, also, the longer that the viewer is in an image, the more connections they make. So the one, two, three approach is, where are the eyeballs falling? Where is that area of interest where we want the, the viewer to, to look at? And then three, how do we keep that viewer in the image? Uh, just a real quick question. Is this making sense to people? Just uh, it does go ahead and do that. in the chat. Everybody following along so far? A A or an A. <laughs> so and yep. this is gonna be and, and this is gonna be popping up several times throughout the presentation. Catch the eye, capture the mind, maintain the viewer in the image. Very cool. Everybody's following along. Okay, very good. So now what I want to go to is I want to go back to the area of interest because this is where the magic happens. And I'm going to ask our viewers, you know, most of us has, has looked at an image, a really cool image, and we just kind of fall into the image. We kind of lose ourselves. We're not critical of it. 
We're not, re, you know, reasoning. We're just in that image. We're enjoying it. We're having fun with it. And it's a really good image. That's the magic. And interestingly enough, that effect that people are going through, um, it's been identified throughout history. Uh, Aristotle, Horace, Plotinus, uh, Immanuel Kant, and, and numerous others. David Hume is, is another big name. All of them have talked about this effect that people will enter a bit, you know, they'll, the, the eyeballs will go into the image, um, they like the image, and then boom, the mind gets engaged, uh, the eyes are bouncing all over the place all over the place. The imagination is going nuts. And, and there's kind of this uh, playful feeling. So there's all these possibilities. People are looking at the details. They're getting context. This, what it, this is what it means to be in the image. Um, and this, I mean, and the viewer's mind loves it, loves it. So this is the scenario we want to set up for people. Going back to this slide, area of interest and what captures the mind, I'm going to go right through the list. Variety in details, variety in tones, variety in textures, visual weight. Uh, we've got placements and, and uh, of the subjects, removal of distractions, full dynamic range. That's what makes the image, image looks right to the eye. So when I say a, a full dynamic range, I'm saying our blacks are blacks. Our whites are whites, and we've got details in the blacks and details in the whites. And I cannot stress that enough. People love the details, and they need to see the details. Um, also, something that came up is the image should be fairly easy to understand in, in one view. Uh, we live in a world where we are inundated with images. I think we see, like, 5,000 to 7,000 a, a day. We've become uh, desensitized to images. So sometimes we, we just want those images that, you know, pop out and then, then we fall into. It, just, it feels good. It nourishes us. It's everything that we want. Uh, going back up to here. And what's important is I can compose to interest while I'm shooting, right? That's just getting a right exposure and making sure I got details wherever they need. I can compose to interest while I'm processing, right? Because I can use tones to re reveal the detail or maybe to, to hide detail. And I can even create interest when I'm putting my, presentations, my presentation together. Somebody, somebody's dog needs some love. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, it's my dog. <laughs> Give me just a sec. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, sorry about that, guys. My wife is coming home and my, my little one is, is going nuts. So sorry about that. Uh, Clicked on the wrong thing. So what I'm just trying to say is it's in these details that the magic happens and when we when we're composing you know we can be doing that in in camera while we're shooting it can be in processing and it can be in in presentation as well so this column here these are the do's right these are the things we want to do um if you're a competitor this is going to be of interest to you, and this is solely Mike's view of the world, but I'm right. Uh, craft content and composition is everything. First impressions rule, right? So any of you that have been to a PPA competition or, or IPC, those judges are not spending a lot of time with the images. We're getting judgments back within a, a few seconds, right? And the reason for that is because those judges have seen thousands of images. I think they usually get it right, but they're making almost an immediate decision of, does this look like good photography? Does this look like a, a, a good image? 
And what's critical is they only are spending just a few seconds with the image, right? And then if it's challenged, they'll speak to it. Here's what's important. If they like your image, then they'll go through your image with a favorable disposition. And they'll be looking to the, the pluses of that and why that image should be a, a, a good image. If an image kind of feels off, if there's some, some flaws, um, boom, they're out of the image. They're not gonna fall into the image. They've seen a flaw. And now when they go through the image, they're gonna be looking for flaws, right? Um, and I think we've all been at competitions or maybe seen this with our own work. Um, it gets to the point sometimes where, you know, they find flaws that really aren't even real, <laughs> you know. But the, the, the point is first impression rules. We have to use um, craft with our images. And what we want to do is we want to get that strong first impression and then again, we want to go to that second space of interest. So now they're looking through it and, and they're enjoying it. Um, just real quick, here's a list of the don'ts, right? So these are the, the things that are going to kill your image very, very fast. If people see these things, they won't be in your image. They'll end up just looking for, for more flaws. So you can go ahead and, and, and read that list. Screenshot uh, it. <laughs> you know, go, go ahead and screenshot it. Uh, just a, a couple of points. Uh, one on there is out of palette colors. And what I mean by that is I do a lot of landscapes and I tend to do a bit of processing on them. And it's not uncommon for me that my, my greens in the spring end up looking a little neon or they're looking a little too green. They just look off. That's what I mean by out of palette colors. Uh, let's see. And then the other one I want to talk about is just strong vignettes. I look at a, a vignette as, as a design element. However, I, under, I understand that strong vignettes have kind of been a thing for PPA. Uh, over the last few years that they've been seeing a lot of images with, with those strong vignettes and they've been doing good. And I'm not one to, to compete, you know, with, with that, but my personal opinion is if you can see the vignette, it's probably too strong because you can put on a light, of, a light vignette, have it do exactly what you want it to do without it overpowering the rest of the image. Cause again, we want people to be in the image. We don't want them, looking at those design elements. Okay, let's do some practical processing. Uh, normally when, when I do this, I like to, to process it in front of people, but we don't have that kind of time tonight. So we're just gonna go through kind of screens of, of the changes that, that I made using the guidelines that I'm talking about. So to start us off, this is the clock tower in Spokane. I wanted a nice black and white with it. Uh, that's the shot. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the histogram, uh, you will see here on the side that my left side, these are my darks, right? These are my brights. But what this is telling me is I've captured all of my darks. Uh, we're not compressed up against the left side. And on the right side, we've got a few things that are slightly overexposed, but nothing too bad. Uh, you need to know this because when I'm out shooting, I'm the guy that's talking about details in the darks, but when we look at this image, they're not there. However, when I shot the image, I shot to the histogram and I know that I got the details. I'm just going to bring them out later when I'm doing processing. So, boom, when I get home and I start my processing, I'm in camera raw and I'm just using the sliders just to review, just to reveal all those details. And in this particular shot, we were talking about variety. We got variety in the trees, variety in the click tower, variety on the stones. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And normally when I process, the first thing I do is I, for my night shots, is that I do lighten them up. So I kind of have, here's my good starting point. 
So if we go through my process, starting from here, what catches the eye? Uh, I know with this image, I kind of like the, the dark tower against the lighter sky. And I also kind of like the lighter area down here against the, the darker background. So I just want to do a little something up here because I want the eye to land up here. And all I did is I just lightened my background. Looks like I, <laughs> I'm pointing, you can't see where I point. Also <laughs> looks like I lightened up a little bit down here as well. Yeah, we can see right? your house. <laughs> that, that, that's right. So I'm just adding a little bit of drama to the sky. It's a little bit of contrast uh, with, with the clock tower. And it's starting to define my area of interest as well. Kind of right through here. So I don't need to do much more than that. That's a pretty strong design element. So now I'm looking at how do I reveal, how do I pop all my textures? And in this particular image, um, there's some big distractions right off the bat that are kind of interfering with how I'm looking at the image. So I'm gonna get rid of distractions, right? So that's the first set of distractions that I, I, I removed. And as you're looking at it, I'm gonna ask you guys, you know, do these images feel the same or do they feel different, right? Because this one's feeling a little bit more serene. What do you think? Put it into to chat right now. What yeah. Do you get out of the second image that you don't get out of the first. So the, the idea for me in doing this is by removing the distractions, it now supports and emphasizes more this area of interest. We're getting feedback now. It's cleaner, yeah. uh, feels more peaceful. Second is more natural, has a different feel. Uh, the less street lights work, eyes move towards the tower. It's a romance by taking out the light pole. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and then after this, I even went further and I took out the, the other two lights. Um, but as I did that, it's kind of like, mm, I think it kind of needs them. It's a little bit of visual, uh, a little bit of, of visual tension. Also, those are great spots. Those are within the area of interest. So the eyeball can go down there and kind of get this, you know, small triangle going, going with the eyes. So I took them out and then I put them back in. <laughs> yep. The only difference is I did lower the intensity of the reflection on this. So I brightened the, the background to get the eye to land on the clock tower. We brought up some details by lightening the back and then we're supporting those details by removing distractions. Now what I'm doing, and you guys are welcome to do this as well, is I'm looking right about here in the center of the image, and I'm using my peripheral image, my peripheral vision to look around the edges of the, the, the image and see if there's any, any more distractions. And this is a little bit of a knit, but if I'm doing competition, this is what I do. Uh, this is bugging me a little bit. This area down here is bugging me a little bit. And then the railing is bugging me a little bit. So I went in and I just toned those down. Just toned them down. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah these, these are little things. Also right here, these are like electrical boxes and some signage and stuff, you know, I just popped them out. And then with this to support the area of interest a little bit more, I put on a vignette. This vignette is a little heavier than I would normally do, but I needed it visible so you guys could see what I'm doing. And also now we've got some layering of light going on. We've got a little bit of brighter light through here. We got the regular sky and then a little bit darker, just adds a little bit of depth. And then finally, because I really want those details to pop and I want the mind to kind of search the details and stuff, um, I popped the details a little bit more on the clock tower and down here. 
So I'm not saying this is a masterpiece, but what I am saying is that this, these are the kinds of decisions that I'm making to get my images really, you know, looking really good. Um, I think this scored an 83 at, at PPW. Nice. So what kind of questions do we have? Yeah, so Dude. for this first section, any questions for Mike? Put them in the chat right now. I think you're doing a pretty good job of explaining everything. I okay. like that, being able to see the examples as we're working. I'm uh, I'm getting concerned because, like, wow, this time's going fast. So there's my before and after, right? And, again, the eye's really hitting that clock tower. That's where I want it to hit. Details are revealed. Distractions are removed. And, you know, stuff from the side is gone. And another important thing I want to point out to you guys is I'm using black and white because all I'm using is pretty much just brightness, brightness and contrast, right? I don't really use presets much. Um, these are just little changes that, that end up having a little bit more. And also there's also the artistic effect. People may like the image or maybe they would want the sky darker or, or something else. Those are individual uh, choices and stuff, but this is the process. So we've got some questions for you, Mike. <laughs> okay. Um, are you selecting the background with blending modes? No. Um, again, you're, you're, you guys are going to be surprised on, on this image. Uh, brightness and contrast, cloning, and then I think they, I used a camera raw with a little clarity to, to pop those details. That's it. That's next question. Do you prefer camera raw or Lightroom? So I've been using bridge with, with camera raw. It's just what I started with a, a long time ago and it, it just works for me. Um, if I were doing more event type photography where I've got a number of images in front of me, there have been times where I use Lightroom just because I can get them up and, and, and cold really fast. Uh, do you have a feel in mind when you're actually shooting the image? Yes. Um, no, <laughs> maybe. So for, for this image, this was actually a color image. And then later on, I, you know, what I was really kind of going for is, you know, it'd be cool with a little fog to kind of get a London, dark London feel to it. Uh, that came a little bit later, but I'm going to answer your question on our next example. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, what tools are you using to tweak the image? So again, I'm, I'm mostly in, in Photoshop and Camera Raw. Most of it is Photoshop. Uh, again, no joke, guys. Um, I'll add a brightness layer, uh, lighten the, the image a little bit, and then mask it where I want it. I think most of this image, that's what I did. Uh, I did use the shadow slider to lift the details in Camera Raw. And... You know, that's that's just about it. I'm I'm a really simple guy. And how did you lighten the spot in the sky behind the clock? So what I did is I brightened the entire image, then I masked it, so I blocked out, and then I just used my brush and I brushed in where I wanted it lighter. Very cool. That's all the questions we have so far. We're ready for more. Let's go because we got more cool stuff. So again, catch the eye, capture the mind, maintain the viewer in the image. So this is the carousel in, in Spokane. Again, this histogram would look like the clock tower, which is heavy to the left, but I caught all the details. So my, my first thing I did is, boom, I just lightened my, my shadows got all those details, and now I got a good image to start with. So I want to capture the eye first, right? My main subject is the carousel. So I'm going to lighten my carousel. And you may notice that it's lighting up above the carousel as well. Whoops. So, and the reason for that is I learned a long time ago, if I try to try to lighten just a specific shape or an outline, I end up with those weird halos. Um, however, if I use a huge brush, it works great, 
the halo is actually a long way from the building and no one notices. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> yeah. So I lighten the building and then I darken the background. Okay. And this is what I'm doing. I'm composing for catching the eye. And what I'd like to show you is, so this is where I had, had done my first lighting and then, right, lighting, lighting the carousel, darkening the background, just those two simple things. Whoops. Pretty strong impact. Mark, Pretty strong. Are you, are you freehand brushing or masking out those areas? Yeah. So you're not making yeah. a selection or anything like that. You're just freehand painting it no. where you think it needs to go. No. And, and as we go through most of my images, that's the way it is. Big, broad, easy, easy brush strokes. Both of these were just brightness. I upped the brightness, then masked them where I wanted to, and then I darkened it. Okay, so moving along, because this, this is going super fast. So removing distractions, right? The first distractions I see, you know, down here, this is a problem area. Boom, took care of those. Uh, looks like I also, I'd brightened these areas and they were a little overexposed, so I toned those down. Uh, next up, these little lights were kind of bugging me. These lights were, were kind of bugging me. Boom, they go out, right? And as we remove those distractions, that center and area of interest just becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, this is a problem area up near the top. So I darkened that down. Uh, let's see, what did I do next? Uh, the next thing I did is I just toned down, looks like I toned down the, the front here. And that's pretty much all I did with the image. So not a whole lot of edits, but in this image, removing distractions made that carousel really pop. Uh, I will add, if you look at the, the lights, right, the lights that I'm turning off and on, I would see that more as an aesthetic choice uh, because this has more visual energy than this, right? This feels a little bit more serene than this. So it's more of a choice. And this goes back to the person that asked about if I had something in mind before I shoot. Uh, with this particular image, I was thinking Disneyland light parade at night. Uh, so I wanted all kinds of light out there. I wanted sparkly effects. I was I shoot with a Nikon. And with this shot, I was shooting with, uh, it's a 50 millimeter 1.8 D lens. Uh, it's an older lens, but the uh, leaves that, that are inside, the blades inside are straight. And at F8, F11, you start getting all these crazy, crazy sun, sun stars, which just look a lot better. Okay. I'm pushing the wrong button. Okay, so there's my before and my after. Before and after. Um, again, super simple editing techniques, and this baby won me a Best in Architecture from PPW. Cool. I do have a question. At what point in the process do you crop? So with, with this image, uh, it, this is actually a stitched image. It was two or three images together. Um, I tend to crop earlier on. Uh, it just gives me a sense of this is what I'm working with. And, you know, there's been more than one time that I cropped, I did the editing, and crap, I wish I would have left more in, you know. But because of the way I'm processing fast, clean edits, um, I just start over. Okay, so again, process to catch the eye, process to capture the mind, and again, that's where the magic is. We want those details. We want those details. Um, and we want to do things to support that area of interest. So that's where the eyeballs are staying. Uh, I'm just going to share a, a few images with you. Um, this was a great image for me. 
In this particular image, the sky was actually a little purple. The building was a little bit red. And I used camera rod to dial those purples to, to blues, the building to orange, and the judges absolutely loved it. Cool tones, warm tones, uh, also with design elements, you know, complementary colors, really cool stuff. Um, this image was entered into PPW. Uh, you guys might be able to guess right off the bat what the judges talked about the most, which is that telephone pole to the side. Um, lots of interesting conversation on that. I left it in intentionally because I thought it broke up the, the, the image. If you look at the church, you can see details in the church because Mike's a detailed guy, right? So I want details in my image. The recommendations I got, to make a long story short, was, you know, get rid of the telephone pole so that way there's nothing to even talk about. And then someone suggested that I just let the church fall to black, um, which to me personally just kind of feels like a big no-no. But I did it. And that's what the final image was. And I had redone it so it looks a little different. I think that image is a lot stronger. Um, and also when I'm saying that there's no uh, absolutes in this, it was a big deal for me to make that into a black silhouette. Glad that I did it. So took some chances, tried some new things. This is an infrared shot. And again, here's my my center of interest, here's my area of interest, and it's really defined by, by the darks. And interestingly enough, the reason I selected this image is because it's looked off to me for a number of years, and I couldn't put my finger on it until actually today when I was putting some of these slides together. I was using a super wide angle lens, and I'm actually fairly close. The line of this door looks a lot wider than the line of the, the threshold. Um, so at some point, what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to stretch this out just a little bit so it's more in line with the door. But again, where's my eye falling? Where's the area of interest? And then how am I supporting it? And in this case, I'm supporting it by darkening down the sides. I've got like two or three more of these, Chris. Um, so this is, uh, this was called grace um not a lot to talk about. you could talk about this one all day there's all kinds of designs design elements out there. i tend to use vignettes and i darken down the edges on my images but i couldn't do it with this one the gray on it if you look right through here you can see some dots uh, i can't remember if that was just rain or like bubbles coming up from the water but those little dots are present throughout all the water so I used just a touch of gray, so those dots were visible, so it added just a little bit of texture. And I put it on a white background because I wanted the judges to know I'm trying to master the whites. And what kind of happened by, by fluke is the little bit of gray, the this, this square with the key line, that became my area of interest. And it was one of the few images and one of the first times where it's kind of like, you know, wow, the presentation is really defining the area of interest rather than the decisions that I'm making. Uh, this image, the B is my center of interest. The area of interest in this one is defined by color. Uh, another image that I entered into to PPW, this was last year. Most of you can guess again what the one spot that was most talked about, which of course is the crane touching the frame. It was done with intent. Uh, I just wanted to break that frame and I wanted this to be a super strong focal point because I wanted eyes going up. So between the different areas, eyes were really bouncing around. Uh, interestingly enough, I also had mentioned to you, I'd critiqued a lot of paintings uh, last year and those guys in, and gals in, in the romantic period, they were breaking the frame like crazy. So, you know, kind of what I learned from that is um, there's stuff you do for competition and then there's stuff you do for yourself. And sometimes the images we do for ourselves don't necessarily make good competition pieces. 
Um, my last image, uh, this image did well at PPW. That's for professional photographers of Washington. It did well at ASP. It merited it at, at PPA. Um, I also entered into Oregon. I'm a member of them, and I've hung out with those guys for a long time. But when I was looking at this for Oregon, it was kind of like, you know, this looks a little neon, right? This is that out-of-color palette uh, example that I was talking about. It looked a little neon. So I went back. I just lowered the contrast a little bit, desaturated it, and made my, my greens look a, a little bit more yellow. Um, and the end result was Trophy for Best Landscape, the CPP Elite Award, and to my little heart's desire, Best, comp best Composition Award, right? <laughs> Which for a guy who's doing a lot of tough talk and composition, that was a cool thing to get. Uh, finally, tonight went a lot faster than, than I had uh, uh, expected it to be, uh, just kind of as a tip. When you listen to people talk about composition, they're, they're talking in nouns. Oh, look at the color. Look at the leading lines. Um, but what we want to do is we want to switch that around. So we're talking about composition with our feelings first. Uh, so aside from the approach that I talked tonight, and I think this is really important, when you're speaking to composition or you're speaking to critiquing, put your feelings first. I feel a sense of time due to the leading lines. Uh, I feel warm due to the, you know, the red tones. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm leaning because the horizon is crooked. And then what starts to happen is you're talking from your feelings um, and then speaking to the composition. If I run back up here real quick to, uh, I'll call this Grace. I can talk about shape, I can talk about form, it's you know horizontally, asymmetrically, vertically, it's symmetrical, it's, it's perfect rule of thirds, it's high keys. I can talk about design elements on this all day long, but my feeling is just all that white is, is speaking a bit to the divine to me. It looks really graceful, it looks really peaceful. That's what I'm getting out of the image. Right. So I can talk about the design elements all day long, but it's, you know, what's making me feel that. So what I take away from this image is um, and what I'm learning from it is, you know, high key doing wildlife um, can really spurn some emotions. It can really bring those emotions out. OK. So we've got a couple of questions, and if you yeah. do have questions for Mike, put them into chat. Uh, while he's answering these, we might have time to to get to your question. Uh, so wow. Donna wants to know on the carousel image, um, why you didn't do anything about the big sign in the background? I think the parkade one. Sure. Uh, two reasons. One, I had tried to take it out, and it was just really painful with the, that tree. So it was really tough to do. And then the second part of it for me is the parkade sign up here is up here in the left. So if people's eyes are going up here, not too big a deal. If there was some big sign down here in the lower right corner or maybe right over here, I would have taken more effort to, to get rid of it. And then the final thought on that is just, this is also an I iconic um, sign on, on the Spokane skyline. So it's not a big deal leaving it in. Cool. A uh, question from Carolyn. Do you use a dedicated camera for infrared? I do. I do. As a matter of fact, I, I just got a, an upgrade. Uh, I'm using a Nikon D810 that's been converted to just kind of the, the standard uh, infrared uh, filter. And, and that seems to work really well for me. Uh, I'm on Facebook. If any of you guys would like to, to friend me, um, I've got quite a few images there and at the risk of sounding full of myself, I got some cool stuff in infrared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. And I'm also going to be sending out a follow-up email after this that has Mike's contact information as well as a link to his website. I also put that link in chat um, earlier. So if you scroll up there, um, you can see it. 
Um, so, so far, we've just got uh, people saying thank you and uh, appreciating the perspectives that are going on stuff. Uh, if you do have a question, type it okay. in now. Um, we'll, we're waiting on that one. I do have some uh, uh, prizes and giveaways and fun stuff to uh, do. So uh, uh, let's take a peek at those. And uh, first off, thanks to ACI for uh, sponsoring this and giving us these cool things uh, for you guys. Um, they do have a special going on right now, 40% off of serendipity backgrounds or flooring. Um, so the code's on here. It does expire on the 18th. So if you're looking to add to your collection, uh, definitely write that down. And it is in the follow-up email as well. Um, do want to let you know about some of the upcoming shows that we have. We've got uh, Live Imaging uh, is going to be the ACI mentor team giving some tips and tricks. A uh, whole bunch of great information that's on there. Um, a lot of familiar faces that you've already seen over this last year too. And we've got Mike Price coming in at the beginning of February looking at headshots and how you can make that a profitable addition to your business. Um, so that should be kind of fun. Uh, so let's get to the prizes because everybody loves prizes. And uh, first up, we've got a $50 lab credit to ACI. So uh, let's see who gets that one. You like the new picture for the new season? <laughs> And we got a lot of names on here today. Everybody want to see you, Mike. And Pete. So congratulations, Pete. You've got a $50 uh, lab credit. So up next, we've got a $75 lab credit. Because uh, things just keep on getting better and better. It's Leslie. Well, she thought she wasn't going to be here today. But uh, luckily, her schedule got moved. She, she messaged me earlier saying, oh, no, I don't know if I can come. <laughs> and now let's go with our final prize, a $100 lab credit. What a great way to uh, uh, start off the year. And that lab credit is going to go to... Let's got to finish spinning first. And we registered Cohen Studios. I don't know what your first name is, unless it's Cohen. Uh, but uh, I'm assuming your last name's not Studio. <laughs> but congratulations on that one. You got our uh, $100 prize that's there. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, let me just take a quick peek and see if we had any more. Uh, so is there a recording of this? Uh, yes, there is. It'll be available next week. There's also going to be a follow-up email that's going out letting you know there, but you can check it out on ACI's uh, website, acilab.com slash let's-develop. You can watch the uh, replays there. Uh, good and timely program. Kind of fun. Um, so, Yeah. Everything's looking good right here. That's officially a wrap, Mike. I think you blew everybody's minds a little bit. <laughs> oh, and we're muted. I'm not hearing you. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> no, I, I was just saying I enjoy meeting new people and talking photography, so if anyone's got any questions, feel free to contact me. So reach out to Mike directly. Yep, and his uh, contact information is coming up on that follow-up. So... Uh, that's officially our beginning of 2022. So uh, happy new year, everybody.